Hi, I'm excited to be here today with you for the Microsoft Technical Takeoff. My name is Nick Welton. I'm a senior product manager on the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint team. We're gonna cover what we've done with the Windows Firewall over the last year in creating new capabilities and enhanced management functionality, making it easier for you all to use the Windows Firewall. We'll cover a number of new things that we've added. One of those is our really cool integration with the Windows Defender application control app ID tagging feature. We're also going to bring some relief for those folks with AED joined machines and our new network list manager settings. We've also added support for ICMP inbound and outbound rules. We've made it easier for you to configure the firewall logs directly from Intune and new additions to the CSP. I'm going to cover something that we've added for some time, but I want to bring attention to, to make your experience with debugging, drop packets and connections much easier with the firewall. And we'll cover some of the new functionality that we're adding, so you all can take advantage of that soon. Just as a brief introduction, what is the Windows Firewall? Windows Firewall is known by a couple names, Windows Defender Firewall, Microsoft Defender Firewall. It is a stateful host firewall that helps secure the device by allowing you to create rules that determine how network traffic is permitted. This firewall can be managed with Intune, group policies, and locally with the settings configuration on any Windows device. Windows Firewall reduces the attack surface of a device, providing an extra layer to the defense in depth model. Reducing the attack surface of a device increases manageability and decreases the likelihood of a successful attack. With its integration with IPsec, Windows Firewall provides a simple way to enforce authenticated end-to-end -end network communications. It provides scalable, tiered access to trusted network resources, helping to enforce the integrity of the data and optionally helping to protect the confidentiality of the data. Because Windows Firewall is a host-based firewall that is included with the operating system, there's no other hardware or software required. Windows Firewall is designed to complement existing non-Microsoft network security solutions. We have a documented API for that. Rolling on, we're going to talk about the WDAC app ID tagging interface that we've created with firewall rules. And you'll see much of the configuration that I do throughout this presentation will be done through Intune. Customers have been asking, can you help us create a secure way to reference an application or a group of applications without the use of a fully qualified path or without the use of wildcards in listing those applications? We heard this feedback. We said, let's take a holistic approach for delivering robust integration that allow you to create flexible rules and to do them securely. Windows Defender Application Control, or WDAC, is Microsoft's app control security feature. WDAC is built into the Windows kernel on desktop and server systems, which prevents the need to download and install any additional clunky agents on top of these systems. Since WDAC is built into the kernel, it can validate kernel processes like drivers, in addition to applications and scripts to lock down systems to run only trusted authorized code. WDAC ties into Defender products to make reporting easier, as well as make reputation and intelligence-based decisions. WDAC ties into MEM Intune and MEM Config Manager to make management of WDAC policies and applications easy. Lastly, WDAC is supported on all Windows 10 and Windows 11 systems, including Server 2016, 19, and 2022. And best of all, there are no hardware or licensing restrictions. Leveraging a WDAC application ID policy, in addition to the firewall policy that you're trying to create, we provide powerful ways for you to create firewall rules that are tailored to your applications and your environment. With this capability, we bring flexibility to create and scope your firewall rules in a way that makes sense for your organization. You can do this with publisher rules, for example. 
You're able to rely on WDAC policies to define the applications that you want to create the rules for, and the WDAC app ID functionality adds an administrator defined tag to the given process. So how does it work? To deploy a WDAC app ID policy, Windows Defender application control policy needs to be created and deployed, which specifies individual applications or group of applications to apply a policy app ID tag in the process token. Then an administrator can define firewall rules which are scoped to all processes tagged with a matching policy app ID. To learn more, we have published the WDAC application ID tagging guide. There you'll learn how to create, deploy, and test an app ID policy to tag applications. From this view, you can see where you can configure the policy app ID. So as you create a firewall profile and you go through that process, there is a field policy app ID which allows you to enable it and list the policy app ID that you have created through your WDAC deployment. Next, we will touch on the support we have added for ICMP type in firewall rules. In this view, you can see where we have added ICMP types and codes. This allows you to configure inbound and outbound rules as part of the firewall rule. We're going to cover the items that we just discussed in this demo. Here within Intune, you can create a new firewall profile. This profile supports all the CSP properties that are available in the firewall CSP. As with any profile or rule, you will create a name. Within this configuration, it allows you to modify any of the CSP properties. So you can enable the rule, you can choose the interface types that you'd like this rule to apply to, you can choose the network types as well. Here you would also define whether it is an outbound rule or an inbound rule. Some of the other properties that we supported like file path, and this one as we talked about with our WDAC app ID tag, this is where you would specify the uh, the tag that you created with your WDAC policy. And here you can see the additional support for ICMP types and codes. Once the properties are set accordingly, you can go through the rest of the profile creation process, defining scope tags, assigning to groups, ultimately viewing a summary and creating the rule. If you want to check the summary, just click the rule and you can have a nice summarized view of the policy that you just created. For those of you with AAD joint devices, you know the pain of configuring your firewall policies accordingly. So the new network list manager settings are available in the endpoint security firewall policy. These are two additional properties. One allows you to define the TLS authentication endpoints these are really the URLs to endpoints that are accessible within your network. As soon as a device can connect to that, it can apply a domain profile. And second, we support using the Configure TLS Authentication Network name. Log and log configuration has been a management challenge. So we've also added this functionality to the firewall CSP, and as a result is also supported in Intune. These settings allow you to enable log success connections, log a file path, log drop packets, and log ignored rules. This screenshot shows you what this looks like within Intune firewall profile configuration. Those four items highlighted in yellow allow you to configure the logging behavior of your firewall. While not part of the firewall CSP, we have added the ability to configure the object access events. These are events 5152, for example, or 5157. And here you can actually configure the conditions for those events as well. Connection success, connection failure, or for both cases. Now for another demo of the stuff that we have covered. Here we find ourselves in Intune, again, to manage our firewall. We'll start by creating a new policy. 
defining the profile within that policy. Of course, we need to give it a name, and then we'll be able to configure the settings. By selecting the firewall dropdown, again, here are the properties that can be configured. The ones that we're looking for are around logging. This is, again, new functionality that is, has been added to the CSP. We allow you to define the log file path and define the, the configuration of the log itself. Here you can see the network list manager properties being configured as well. And just above that, you can see the auditing dropdown for the object access events. Again, we'll go through, define or add a scope, uh, device groups, and view the summary of the rule that we just created. In the spirit of usability, we've made debugging firewall rules easier with the addition of the filter origin ID. This has been out for some time, but I do want to call it to your attention because this can really help reduce uh, friction in your uh, firewall debugging. So we've added new fields to events 5157 and 5152. Specifically, the filter origin ID field helps to identify the cause of the packet drop or a block connection. The filter origin specifies either the rule ID or the name of one of the default block filters. Here in filter information, the first value is the filter origin ID. So how do I use this? Well, I take that filter origin ID and I look up the firewall rule responsible for that. I take the filter origin ID as durable. It does not change. So using the get net firewall rule command, I can look up the firewall rule by name using the filter origin ID. And here you can see in the screenshot the definition of the firewall rule that was responsible for the given event. One of our most asked about features for firewall is reusable groups. So I'm excited to share a little bit more about that with you now. So what are reusable groups? Reusable groups are an efficient way for you to create a group of IP addresses or to create a, a group with an FQDN that allows you to reuse that group across multiple firewall rules. So you no longer have to change every IP address across every rule when something changes. You make the change to one group and that change is reflected on all firewall rules that reference that group. And we've added this FQDN or DNS resolution feature that we're really looking forward to. We have some known performance issues with this that are being addressed right now. And that's the primary reason that that feature is in public preview today. So what is the fully qualified domain name feature within Windows Firewall? This is the ability to use a URL instead of IP addresses to create a firewall rule. So if you want to block badsite.com, you can just create a firewall rule that says block badsite.com instead of creating a block policies for a bunch of IP addresses. But there are some details that need to be uh, considered and configured for this to work. You must be using Microsoft Defender antivirus and it needs to be on. Network protection needs to also be enabled. It can be enabled in either block or audit mode. The DNS query is inspected, so anytime either a browser or the machine is configured to use DNS over HTTPS, the visibility to do that IP resolution won't be there. So make sure that DNS over HTTPS is disabled for either the device or the browser. This feature uses the device's default DNS settings. So if you're using custom DNS, again, it can have an impact on how this feature functions. So how do I create these new reusable groups? Within Intune, in the firewall section, you can see in the top right, reusable settings. The new settings introduce the option to use fully qualified domain names, FQDNs, as part of the rule definition. If the auto resolve flag is set to true, 
then the keyword field of the object is expected to be a fully qualified domain name, and the IP addresses will be automatically resolved on the target device. As stated, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, AV, must be primary and network protection must be enabled. If not configured, the target device will not enforce the rule with the FQDN keywords. When the reusable setting group has been saved, it will appear in the reusable settings group list. At any point, the admin can edit the group properties. When an administrator configures a new Windows client firewall policy, they will see the option to reference any of the existing reusable settings. By selecting the set reusable groups link, the list of existing groups will appear. The admin may then add one or more groups and the firewall rule will inherit those properties. Admins can continue to manually configure the firewall rules and their properties and reference groups. They can also mix and match other rules that reference reusable groups, have manual definitions within the policies or both. Looking ahead, we have some improvements on the way that firewall rules apply to endpoint devices. We wanna make sure that they are consistent and you know the state of the endpoint at all times. So we're enhancing the way the policies apply to the endpoint with our atomic rule support. We also are adding support for Windows subsystem for Linux settings. And of course, we wanna bring the FQDN feature in Windows Firewall to general availability. So we are continuing to work on the quality of that feature. I appreciate the time you've spent with me today learning about Windows Firewall.